Hi everyone, my name is Ashna and in this lesson we're going to be learning about dot plots, box plots, and histograms. So just an overview of the graph so you're prepared. So the first one, we have a box plot and what this shows is the minimum, the maximum, and the median of a data set. Next we have these dot plots which is when each dot represents a data value and it shows the frequency of the data at each point. And a histogram is essentially the same thing as a dot plot, but the only difference is the frequency is shown as a bar graph. So let's go over each one in detail now. So first we have box plots. Um, the important terms to understand for a box plot include a median. So the median is the middle value of a data set. So half of the values are above this data point and half of the values will be below. The range of a data set is the difference between the biggest and smallest data points. So it's the number of numbers that's covered in a data set and basically a box plot shows the whole range. And a quartile divides the data into four different parts, which will be shown in a box plot. So let's go over the parts of a box plot when we see one. So there are five important points that we need to make a box plot. The first one is a minimum. So the minimum data set minimum value of the data set is what goes at the end. Then, of course, there's also the maximum. Next, we're going to have the median. So the median is right where the line in the middle of the box, that would be the median. Next, there's the lower median or quartile. It's also called the lower quartile. And what that is, is the median of the lower half of the data set because the median splits the data set into a lower and an upper half, and then the lower median would be the median of the lower half, so that's gonna be where the box starts. And then there's the upper median, which is the median of the upper half of the data values, and that's gonna be where the box ends. And then the whole area that the box covers, that's what we call the interquartile range. So it's going to be the upper median minus the lower median. So as you can see, in a box plot, the data is divided into four parts. So we have the minimum value to the, for the lower median, and then we have the lower median to the median, and then we have median to the upper median, and then we have upper median to the maximum value. And that's what I meant by quartiles. There's different quartiles. So this is quartile one, where the lower median is. That's quartile one. The median is Q2 or quartile two, and the upper median is quartile three. So these three points divide the data set into four quarters. So steps to forming a dot plot. First, we're gonna identify the endpoints or the minimum and maximum values. In order to do this, we need to make sure that our data is in sequential or numerical order. Next, we're gonna find the median because the median will divide it into the upper and lower halves that we need to find the upper and lower median. So the median after the data was split by the actual median. These are the endpoints of the box to draw. So let's go ahead and try one. So here we have a set of data values and they're already in numerical order. So the first step would be to find the median and the endpoints. <clears throat> so the median is the middle number of the whole data set. And if we go to the middle number, we see that it's seven. So the middle number is seven and the endpoints are just the minimum and the maximum. So it's one and 13. <clears throat> so now we go on our number line and we draw the middle line of the box at seven because that's the median and then so then we know that we have now divided the data set into half of values below the median and half of values above the median. So in order to find the upper and lower median, you would go and you 
would take the middle value of the below median section. So in between the middle value of 135 is 3 and the middle value of 91113 is 11. Then you would go down on your number line and put two more lines where 3 and 11 are. That would then become a box. And then you're going to extend two lines to where your endpoints are. And there you have your box plot. So let's try one more. Here we have test scores on a math test. So remember, we have to fi first find the median of the data set. If you look at the middle value, it's going to be three values below and three values above. So it's 88. And that splits it into those two sections. So we're going to take our lower median, which is 83, because 81, 83, 86, the middle value is 83, and in between 90, 92, and 95, our middle value is 92. Now we draw our lines at these three points, so we're going to have 88, 83, and 92. That forms our box, and then we extend our lines to the minimum and the maximum. The minimum value is 81, and the maximum is 95. So that becomes our box plot. So now you can try with this example right here. So this is points scored in a basketball game. I've provided the number line bef below, but feel free to draw your own. So pause this video and we'll go over it when we come back. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do this problem. So if we first find the median, it's going to be, there are nine numbers in this set. So it's going to be the fifth number. So it's 60, which is the median, and that divides it like this. Now, if you'll notice, there are four numbers below and above. So there is no middle value in this. So our lower median would be right in that middle so what we have to do is we have to find the value in between 52 and 54. So in between 52 and 54, even though it's not part of our data set, we still use the value 53 as our lower median. For our upper median, we have to do the same thing. So we have to do, it will be in between 63 and 65. And even though it's not included in our data set, it's going to be 64. So our three values for our box is 53, 60, and 64. So go ahead and draw those three, form your box, and then you extend the lines to 50 and 66. That becomes your box plot. So let's now read a box plot that's already given to us. So I just want to know the minimum, maximum, median, upper median, and lower median. So we start with the minimum value, that would be the leftmost. So if we look, it looks like it's 6. Next, we would look to the maximum, so the rightmost value, 18. The median would be the line in between the box. So if we look closely, it looks like it's 11. The upper median is where the box ends, right there, so it's 14. And the lower median is the where the box starts so it's nine now i want to know what the interquartile range is and remember i said in the beginning that's the range covered by the box so it's in between it's that region right there and it's in between nine and fourteen so all we do is we do fourteen minus nine and that equals five so the range in between the box is five numbers Okay, we finished box plots. Now let's go ahead and do some dot plots. So let's just start with an example. So here I have a table and it says minutes to eat breakfast and the number of people that take that many minutes to eat breakfast. So you would draw, you remember that X is your minute, your X axis will be minutes to eat and Y is the number of people. So on your number line, we have minutes to eat breakfast and the number of people on the, um, the y-axis. 
So as you can see, the minutes to eat breakfast, the x-axis is numbered by those times, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, and 20. And in order to make a dot plot, here's what we're going to do. So if there are, so there's one person who takes five minutes to eat breakfast. So you're only going to draw one dot there. Each dot represents the number of people. So that shows the frequency of the data. So for 10 minutes, there's two. So you draw two dots. For 15 minutes, there's four. So four dots. And lastly, three dots for 20 minutes. And that's all it is. So you draw... For each y value, you would draw a dot. So if so, if we go and find another example, so you guys can try this one. So I'm gonna put up the x and y and go ahead and try to draw your own um, graph and see if you can do it. So pause this video. Okay, so let's see, you were right. So it would look something like this where we have hamster, dog, cat, and fish labeled there, type of pet, and number of people. So how many people have a hamster? Well, it looks like it's three, so hopefully you drew, drew three dots. There are seven people with dogs, seven dots, five people with cat, five dots, and four fish. So four dots. So draw one dot for each person. So now let's read a dot plot that's here. So this dot plot is number of brothers and sisters. So if I were to ask how many people have two brothers and sisters, well, what would you do? You would go to two on the number line. You would count the number of dots, and that's how many people have brothers and sisters, that many. So here you would go to two, and let's count the dots. One, two, three, four, five. So five people have two brothers and sisters. Let's try one more. I want to know how many people have four brothers and sisters. Go to four on the number line. Count the dots. You'll see that there are two people that have four brothers and sisters. That's all it is. Now let's go into histograms. These are dot plots, but more bar graph form. So... This is the same example that we used for the dot plot, and our dot plot for this example looked like this. Minutes to eat breakfast and number of people. But now we don't want the dots anymore because this is a histogram. What we do want is this. Notice how I added a scale also on the y-axis because in order to tell how far the bar is going, you need to read the scale, right? So in the same way, with five minutes to eat breakfast, there's one person. So you draw your bar up to one. For 10 minutes, there's two people. So you draw it up to two minutes, two people. For 15, you go up to four. And for 20, you go down to three. And that's your histogram. So notice how it's very similar to the dot plot, but instead of drawing dots, you're making the bar corresponding to your y axis. So now you guys can go ahead and try one. This is a favorite food and the number of people that have that favorite food. So go ahead and try to draw the y-axis and the x-axis on your own and label them. Pause this video right here. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that. So here's what I got. So I have on the x-axis type of favorite food and I labeled it pizza, sushi, tacos, and bagels. And then on the y-axis we have the number of people. So for pizza, if we look on our table, four people like pizza. So we would go up to four. Sushi, three people, so you draw it up to three. Tacos, six people, draw it up to six. And bagels would be five, go to five. And that's it. So notice how it's showing the frequency of people who like that favorite food, right? So now let's read a histogram. So this is a histogram of numbers in the set and how many times that number appears in the set. So if I ask how many times does number four appear in the set, you have to go to four on the number line 
and read how many bars it goes up. So if you notice, it goes up to two, so it appears two times. How many times does three appear in the set? We would now go to three. Read it up to, it appears four times. So three appears four times in the set. And that's all. So that was the end of this lesson. Make sure to check out the actual presentation to practice some fun games. And I hope this makes sense and that you now know how to do dot plots, box plots, and histograms. Thanks for watching.